Hey everybody, Eric Songer here with you with my weekly podcast called Second Floor Therapy. Thank you so much for joining me. This is my second episode here in the summer of 19 and the date today is July 14th. 2019 and uh, every week here in July and August I'm going to be doing a second floor therapy episode once again second floor therapy comes from the fact that I'm a middle school teacher who teaches on the second floor and a few years back I had some students who would come up all the time during my advisory and before school and share their issues whether it be school related stuff happening at home and their friend groups and they said it was therapy so second floor therapy and um, there's uh, been a lot of great reaction uh, after the first uh, podcast I did, uh, which had to do with the uh, conference I went to on popular music education. And I want to thank you for your feedback on that. And I, and I think uh, a lot of people have some great, great things to say about that. And uh, even some, some people who have some some issues with doing educate music education that way or some some questions about it. Uh, I think that's great. I think that's great to discussion to get into. And I think one thing in our culture we need to get better at, especially as teachers, is to make sure that everyone's voice is heard and that we try to make sure that everyone's voice is respected. And that even if somebody has something to say that's totally off the deep end, that we can address that and we can talk to students like that and see where they're coming from and see where those ideas come from and, and go from there. And I think if we can teach kids to communicate, to respect each other's differences, to compromise, to learn that we are not all alike, and that's a good thing, uh, that maybe uh, our, our country, our communities, our world have a better chance of having a great future. Um, Because I think many of us can agree right now, especially in our country, that our our politicians, uh, regardless on, on which side you stand, if any, that, uh, that we have some issues when it comes to that. So um, we need to communicate. So I want to thank everyone for communicating with me. And after this episode, I'm sure, again, I will have some people that will be like, preach it, you know, say it louder for the back row, as my former student Anthony Mang said on, one, on Twitter recently, and that made me laugh out loud. And uh, I also I think that uh, I, I, I love to hear differing opinions, and I love people who say, you know, I don't agree with this. Uh, have you thought about this? And uh, I love getting into that discussion because, even though I'm doing a podcast and I might come across as being the expert, I'm not the expert. I'm just somebody that has some opinions and has been doing this for 22 years and, you know, have, have some thoughts and, and hopefully some thoughts that will get you thinking. And, and whether that's thinking the same way I do or another way, uh, that's great. I think it's all about uh, getting us thinking and getting into discussions uh, about these topics because I think that, that in the long run makes everything better. So so today I'm going to go down a different path in popular music education and talk a little bit about middle school schedules. And uh, if you've been following me on Twitter, at Eric Songer, uh, you might have discovered some tweets lately that well, was, were the result of a dream that I had. And now keep in mind, for those of you who don't know me too well, I live in Chaska, Minnesota, which is a suburb of Minneapolis. And it is the next city over from Chanhassen, which of course uh, is the place where Prince had his famous studio, which still is there, Paisley Park. And I had a dream uh, a few nights ago that I had lunch with Prince and pretty sweet dream wish wish it was a reality from when he was still with us but what we were talking about of all things was philosophy of education and some of the things that we talked about were things that I, I firmly believe in and I don't remember all the specifics of the dream, but I do remember after our discussion, uh, we went up on stage and played Purple Rain together. I don't even know what instrument I was playing. Um, I know he was singing and playing guitar, of course. Um, uh, and then after that, I woke up, which is unfortunate because I think we were going to play a whole set. So I was looking forward to the rest of the songs, but then I woke up and that was the end of the dream. So anyway, um, but when I woke up, I remembered some of the topics that we had talked about and uh, topics that, that I hold near and dear to my heart. And I thought about them a little bit more and did a little reading a little research and um, just found some some differing opinions on these things and um, I'm just going to share with you some things that I feel very strongly about and uh, some of them you might be a little bit uh, confused about especially this first one I'm going to say which is I don't think there should be any elective subject areas in middle school to which you're saying wait aren't you a music teacher don't you want kids to be able to take music and the answer to that is absolutely yes and I don't want it to be an elective. I don't want FIED and health to be electives. 
I don't want world language to be an elective. I don't want uh, facts. I don't want industrial tech. Art. I don't want those classes to be elective courses in middle school. I want them to be required courses throughout middle school. I have a number of reasons why, and I'm going to start with this. So first of all, uh, pretty much all of those courses and disciplines. By the way, I'm, before I go any further, I'm going to add to this too. And, you know, I'm an arts guy, so it's no surprise that I'm also going to add to this list theater and dance. Now, let me explain uh, why. I have many reasons why I feel like these should be all required. Number one, these are all required in many elementary schools, at least all the elementary schools I know of in my district and in surrounding districts, kids are going to be taking these courses throughout fifth grade. Now that's actually not completely true. Um, things like industrial tech aren't offered in most elementary schools. And uh, boy, I could go down the, the road of world language. Um, I Now I'm not an expert on this, but I do know enough about world languages and I'm just going to go off on a small tangent here and then, and then this could be a whole other topic. but. Uh, I know that our minds close off of being able to learn world languages uh, as, I'm not going to say easily, um, as easily. And we don't learn the formation of the tongue and the mouth to make certain sounds. Uh, and that, that ability closes off after a certain age. And it, it's just an amazing thing to me that we live in a country where we don't teach Spanish and we don't teach other languages right out of the box and that it's not just part of the elementary education process and that we save it till those processes in our brain close off and we're not able to learn it as easily and then we say oh now you can take world language and I know we have language immersion schools we have a great Spanish immersion school in our district there are many great immersion schools in other languages and districts around us and I think that's awesome but I think Every kid should have that exposure and that opportunity to be part of, become bilingual in our country. Uh, I have some other thoughts on that that, again, I don't have time in the scope of this podcast to get into, but I, I, I do think that all of these subject areas need to go beyond elementary school. Um, yeah, it's, as, as a music teacher, it's great that kids get to go through fifth grade and they're learning all sorts of different musical techniques, concepts, theory, uh, instruments, uh, vocal skills. They're learning so many different things in our music classes. And in our district, we have just, I think, the most amazing elementary music staff ever. Some of the nicest people, very talented teachers, very talented musicians who work really well together as a team, who have great uh, expectations, they're organized, their curriculum, their power standards. It amazes me how they can work with so many students, many more than I see on a weekly basis. Uh, they're amazing. But with that said, there's only a certain level they get to, and I feel like we should go further than that um, in our education process. That should go beyond fifth grade. They should continue to get that wonderful education beyond fifth grade. And I could say that about art. I'll say that definitely for art. I'll say that definitely for personal wellness, FIAD. And as a couple of my, my colleagues mentioned, I, when I first tweeted it, I just, when I wrote down physical education, I was thinking health too. And I really should, should put that independently. Um, but man, do, do kids need health? Do kids need physical education, personal wellness all through middle school? Uh, so important. Um, so so that's, that's the first thing. I'm, I'm, I'm not being very organized in my podcast so far. So the second thing, the second reason I feel like all the kids should have this is because we need kids who are all around great people and have skills in many different areas. Um, this was something I was just thinking about the other day that uh, I have a math education degree along with my music education degree. And in, in order to get that math education degree, I had to take three semesters of calculus, uh, and th now this is in addition to all the algebra, geometry, trigonometry, pre-calc that you would take in high school, but I had three semesters of calc, I had a class called linear algebra, a class called modern geometry, a class, uh, prob probability and stats class, and then probably the hardest class I've ever taken in my life, abstract algebra, and then also a math education course, and had to do some, uh, uh, some work out in the schools teaching math. And uh, it was great. It was, and, and, and if I had become a math teacher, it would have been phenomenal, but I didn't. And so I look back at that now and I say, you know, not that that was wasted and not that that isn't 
didn't do great things from the logical side of my brain and the, the way I can do math at a certain level is, is pretty cool. I, I feel like it's pretty cool, especially in a culture where a lot of people are like, oh, geometry, I was so bad at that. I, I don't even know what the difference is between a sine and a cosine. And I'm like, oh, come on, that's easy. But <laughs> sorry if I'm demeaning anybody. Um, but here's the deal. I'm sitting here saying, boy, I'd really like if we could finish our basement. And many years ago, I was like, man, I really wish I had the skills to build a deck on the back of my house. And lately, I've been thinking about doing more with uh, retirement uh, planning, investments. Um, I wish I had more skills in these areas. And what I wouldn't do to trade right now, taking that abstract algebra course, the hardest class I ever took, what if instead I had taken a class in learning how to build a deck or finish a basement and learn some basic skills in those areas wouldn't have those have benefited me more than what I did with abstract algebra so I'm thinking about wouldn't it be nice if we could teach kids in middle school maybe not necessarily how to finish a basement in middle school but if they got more industrial tech and they got more skills with woodworking and uh, more skills with engineering and more skills with um, obviously there's geometry involved there and just all the all the things you need to know that go into to building things architecture all these different things uh, budgeting investing um, we should be taking that to a new level with kids so they really understand the basics of that and when I say the basics I mean like Obviously, the 13-year-old mind is only so developed. Uh, you're not going to go into, you know, what a, you know, a 20-year veteran accountant knows. Uh, but you can give them much more knowledge than just, you know, let's play the stock market game. You know, you can go beyond that uh, if you make that a priority. Uh, so anyway, I, I just think that kids could benefit a lot more, uh, and and and. Uh, so that's, you know, learning practical skills, but also being all around, you know, another thing about being a music teacher and, um, teaching in the arts, whether you're an art teacher, theater teacher, music, dance, um, we teach so much creativity. Uh, I shouldn't say we teach it. We allow for the creativity. We foster the creativity. We, we give kids room to explore that creativity and that creativity often comes in the form of developing their own thoughts with other people and working together, problem solving, uh, learning how to deal with failure, uh, learning discipline and being able to get better at something and how to uh, face adversity when you're struggling with uh, getting better or you know not being able to get better at something even though you're trying really hard or want to really get better at it. Um, it's that kind of creativity and dealing with adversity and teamwork and uh, working with the technology sometimes that goes around with that that applies to other jobs. I always say, speaking of jobs, I always think of Steve Jobs and how, you know, like the Apple, I, I'm a huge fan of, of the Apple company. You know, I'm recording this on my Apple computer. Uh, I just, there's a lot of people that if, if now I don't even know if I'd be one, but if you sat down with them, I, I know I, for a fact I've had some students that if you sat down with them and said, here, let's take a look at the inside of this computer, uh, we're going to learn how to build a computer. And you could take a look at that and be like, oh, okay, I can just replicate that and do that. And, and they could literally build a computer um, with, with some work, of course. Um, but, you know, that's one thing, and that's great, don't get me wrong. But what about developing the next cool thing or the next big thing in technology, in computers, in phones, in communication. That's where the creativity part comes in. That's where learning how to overcome failure. That's where working together, uh, all that stuff comes into play. And you get that through the arts. And so that's why I think that's so important. Uh, one, one of the many reasons. Um, and now I, I say, you know, electives, there shouldn't be any electives. 
within each of those courses there would be electives so you know you take my my subject area music obviously we already have options of being in band or choir or orchestra but there would be more and this is kind of going off of what I was talking about last week you know maybe you want to be in a DJ club maybe you want to learn how to beatbox maybe you want to learn how to rap maybe you want to learn how to become a great songwriter uh, so you have options within the music classes you would have options within the industrial tech classes you know maybe it's a woodworking class maybe it's an architecture class maybe it's working more with the technology side of things um, there would be a um, you know many different kinds of visual art classes you know maybe you want to do ceramics maybe you want to do oils maybe you want to do charcoal you know there'd be you know different uh, maybe historical periods covered um, there's all sorts of things physical education there's so many different ways you could you could take an aerobics class you could take a team sports class uh, and then there would be some things that you would just have to do like in your health classes there are just certain things that need to be talked about in the middle school age group that everyone needs to go through uh, so there would be electives within those courses but you'd be taking those courses every year um, by the way I I'm not going to go into this right now, but I have this all designed. I have it all planned out. It, it, Money-wise, it's very cost-effective. It would not be much different than our current schedule. Um, I'm sure it would probably end up being a little more pricey than what we're doing now, but not extravagantly more. I mean, really, it would not be. Um, so, and, and it would work. It would work. And I have some more on why that would work later. Um, clicks. I, I'm, I'm going to do a future podcast or five or six on clicks uh, because this is something that's really near and dear to me and it's something that our school struggles with and not just our school but many middle schools struggle with, probably every middle school to an extent. And uh, I think sometimes clicks, uh, kids, I, I know for a fact in our school that some kids don't do music because music is looked at as geeky and some kids uh, drop music to be in full year fi ed because that's the cool thing to do. And there are other classes that can be looked at as being, you know, more of a, a nerdy thing to do. And if you have kids that have to take every discipline, now, I mean, you can't avoid it completely. I mean, you might still end up with kids who are like, well, for my music, I'm taking hip hop. I'm not going to be in, in this other music class. You know, you're still going to have that a little bit. But every discipline, every kid has to do. And uh, I think that will help. Uh, get rid of those those differences and uh, another thing that I talked about a little bit in the last podcast was uh, sometimes our um, minority students don't stick with our music program and sometimes it's based on money sometimes it's based on their friends aren't doing it um, everyone's doing it everyone's doing it regardless of money regardless of color of your skin regardless of how cool you are regardless of what clothes you're wearing regardless of your religious belief your political beliefs Everyone is in, everyone's in music, everyone's in industrial tech, everyone's in FIED, everyone's in health, everyone's in facts, just like everyone's in math and everyone's in science. You're in everything. And I think that helps. Um, I think it also changes that, that, that uh, mindset that, you know, only the core classes are important. And if you think that's not true, you think that kids don't think that, think again, because they do. They, they will literally... Even the kids that love music, my best kids in my class, will even come up to me and say, you know, this class, my, my parents don't care about this grade. I, I, music's great, but, you know, math and, and language arts are the most important because uh, that's what we get tested on. And if you're ever going to get past that as a culture and as a community, um, you got to start changing things like this because you're not going to change it otherwise. Uh, testing is another thing I'm not going to get into today, but if you're going to set a schedule where you're like, these are the four classes that are required, um, but you know what? World language isn't required. Um, music isn't required. Facts isn't required. Art's not required. FIAD's not required. Really? Really? It, just, it still just blows my mind. Um, you know, you're never going to, you're never going to break that, that cycle. And so you got to, you got to require them. Um, for that reason too. Um, and I didn't say I was going to go into test scores, but I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, from the research I've done, test scores are going to get better. You start giving kids uh, art classes, you start giving every kid physical education, 
you start giving kids industrial technology, start giving kids facts. You, if you have kids that are, you know, going to these classes and learning, you know, geometry and then chemistry and then reading intense novels and uh, they're, they're me memorizing and, and deducting um, opinions and, and trying to uh, learn all this information about U.S. history, um, which is all really important stuff. And then you break that up by having them go and learn how to make a great French meal. And then you have them come and you have them play a great Beethoven symphony. And then you have them go and work on an original piece of art. And then you have them go and build um, a, a really cool bookshelf in their industrial tech class. You start doing these things and, and doing all that stuff together. That's great. We already do that a little bit. We do. But the problem is it's really unbalanced and not every kid gets all of that stuff. Every kid should get all of that stuff. Yeah, and then go in and pick your world language and really hit that hard. And hopefully you've already had six years of it before you've gotten to middle school. So there you go. All right, now check this out. We have, in our schedule, and I'm sure we're very similar to other schools, we have four-minute passing periods between our classes. And uh, sometimes we have a seven-period day, sometimes we have a four-period block day. Uh, and we have four minutes of passing time between those. Uh, one of our schools only has three minutes of passing time between those. What are we doing? Uh, you just got done with a really intense science class, and you're going to get three minutes before you then have to go in and learn a really intense geometry lesson. Oh, and then you're going to get another three minutes, and then you're going to have to go in, and you're going to have to learn about this great American novel and really get into answering all these really in-depth questions. Oh, yeah, and right now you don't. You might have one or two classes where you're actually like, moving around and making music or playing basketball. But no, other than that, it's just, there's no breaks. People, we got to have bigger breaks. I know our high schools, uh, I think, I think, I don't know quite the exact schedule. I think one of their passing periods is a longer period, like 10 minutes or something like that. We should have 10 minute passing periods, at least like eight or something. It's time for kids to debrief time for kids just to reset their brains to just get away from it for a little bit and if we need to structure it in some way so we don't just have kids running around the hallways I get that we can do something like that but we can't just have three minute passing periods where kids are like literally stressed when the class ends they just got done with a stressful class and now they're stressed because they have three minutes to get to their next class and they have no time to say hi to their friends and they have no time to reset their brains for the next class <laughs> 10 minute breaks and then lunch after lunch there needs to be a longer break there needs to be like a 30 minute break that break could be some recess time. And yes, I'm talking middle school here, recess time. I'm talking maybe study hall time, maybe time to, to go get some extra help from a teacher. And we kind of have that in our win times, but they're, they don't include all the stuff I'm about to say. They don't include a recess option usually, not for as many kids who probably need it. Uh, maybe that 30-minute session is time just to sit in the lunchroom a little bit longer or sit in somebody else's classroom and just talk. And like I have in my room, second floor therapy, that would be great. Or maybe it's nap time. Yeah, I said it, nap time, middle school. I'm reading a book uh, called When uh, by uh, Daniel Pink, a great author. And in his book, he says that uh, he used to think that naps were for the weak naps were for people who couldn't make it through the whole day but now he's realized that naps are so productive and naps are essential but only if it's about a 10 to 20 minute nap wow if we literally had rooms where kids could just go in again half hour give them some time to, to wind down then literally have time to fall asleep and actually sleep and wake up 
the, the research on what that does for your brain, you know, we, we hear all about that afternoon swoon, that after we have lunch, you know, we're ready for that nap and we don't have time for it and we don't learn as much. Well, what if we did have time for that? And think about how great that next class would be after lunch post nap. I know it sounds weird. It sounds like, how are you going to do that in the school, right? It doesn't seem that hard to me. It doesn't seem that hard to find a room to we're not talking like we have to buy like these nice beds or anything for them. Although we do this mattress sale for our music program. Wait, never mind. Sorry. <laughs> We're not going there. Yeah, just, you know, like kindergarten, get some mats, lay down, turn off the lights. No phones, no phones, no Chromebooks, no computers, no talking. Literally, we're out. <sighs> Man. And yeah, this would all work. This is all work. You, you think about it for a second. 40-minute classes. I know that's a little short. Pioneer, Pioneer Ridge, one of the schools in our district, does 40-minute classes and works just fine for them. They, 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 they're able to get that information across to kids in that time. But uh, you do eight 40-minute classes in a day. You have time for that 30-minute lunch. You have time for that 30-minute session after lunch. If you want to call it win time and just kind of change it around to what I described, that's fine. And then you still have time for five to ten-minute passing periods between all those classes. And you're still fitting that into a seven-hour day. Do the math. It works. It works. Is it going to be more expensive? Yeah, it's. I, I'm not an expert on, on the budget. Yeah, it's going to be more expensive. How much more expensive? I don't know. I don't know. Probably not much. I think we can do it. All right. So if I'm thinking this for middle school, what about high school? Do we still have no elective courses in high school? Uh, I've, I don't teach high school. I, I don't. I don't think we keep going with that pattern. I think we do have elective courses in high school. I think once kids get into high school, uh, they are able to start thinking about what they want to do. I kind of like the way our high school sets it up where uh, there's a requirement of the number of classes you need in certain disciplines. And, and actually, I think almost all the disciplines are required uh, that, I, that I mentioned, um, except for maybe facts, industrial tech. Um, I, I would fidget with the numbers a little bit myself. Um, I don't know if I would need to require as much uh, math and as much, uh, I don't know. I'd, I'd have to think about it a little bit. I, I'd, I'd like to add a little bit more requirements uh, when it comes to physical education um, and uh, the arts and uh, the facts in, in those areas uh, in industrial tech, I think those would be nice to actually add a little bit. Um, but I, I also wouldn't want to take away. Students are, you know, especially you get into 10th, 11th, and, and especially 12th grade, you're really starting to focus in on what you want to do for your living So um, and for college. So I think the electives are good, but I do like uh, some a little bit of requirements in each area. So, but um, yeah, that's something I, ha I would need to give more thought to. But so there you go, uh, second floor therapy, Larry, ladies and gentlemen. I I really enjoy talking about this, and I really wish I had like a group of like, you know, a bunch of people right here next to me. Uh, giving me feedback directly. So if you have any feedback, feel free to share with me at Eric Songer on Twitter. You can email me song, or eric at songerstudio.com. Um, I have a blog, eric Songer at blogspot.com, and I'll probably blog on this topic soon. Um, and you can comment on, on it and, and other things like that. So, But I uh, would really love to hear what you have to say about uh, schedule and requirements in middle school and, and taking breaks and um, what all of these different disciplines, uh, how they can benefit us. And are there things I'm not thinking of that you're like, well, wait a minute, this is not going to work. And it's not going to just not work because we'd have to change a couple things, but maybe I'm missing a big, huge thing here. So, you know, let me know. But thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Again, I don't, I'm not an expert. I just have a lot of opinions, 22 years of teaching, and uh, I'm always looking for what's best for kids. Uh, I know I, I have my own biases. I have my own things I find important as a person, as a parent, as a teacher. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm biased towards arts. I, I'll be the first to admit that, but I also see how much good it does. But I've also spent enough time in the middle school seeing it through the eyes of students, seeing it through the eyes of other teachers and what they teach, and see the benefits of a lot of the great teaching that's going on at my school and in my district. So uh, I try to come at it from that angle too of uh, what's best for kids and what's best for our culture and our community as educators and as schools. So thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.